President Biden had already said that he wants to spend his remaining months in office working on bold reform to the United States Supreme Court. Today, he finally spelled out what that means. He called for three specific changes. One, fix the damage done by the recent court decision that said presidents are free to commit crimes without fear of prosecution. He says that should be undone the only way you can undo something like that, which is with a constitutional amendment. Number two, he said there should be term limits for Supreme Court justices. They shouldn't serve for life anymore. He said there should be 18-year terms. He said that would have the effect of stopping any single president from reshaping the bench for a generation. And third, he said we should institute a binding code of conduct, an ethics code, so justices would at least need to report things like the lavish vacations they have quietly been accepting from rich people who have an interest in the cases that are before the court. That today was President Biden's very specific three-part pitch for trying to restore public trust in the Supreme Court. Now, at least one justice, Justice Elena Kagan, has already said yes to part of that in concept, saying there does need to be an enforceable code of ethics. Justices should no longer be allowed to just police themselves, since clearly that is not working. So there's that to start. Writing today at Slate.com, the civil rights attorney and legal scholar Sherilyn Eiffel underlined the urgency of this moment. She said, quote, in just the last three terms alone, this court has upended longstanding precedents, fundamentally changing the allocation of power between the branches of government, wiping away rights it formerly deemed fundamental, and upending the protections and guarantees upon which tens of millions of Americans had come to rely for decades. Joining us now is Sherilyn Eiffel. She's the Vernon E. Jordan Jr. Endowed Chair in Civil Rights at Howard University Law School and one of my favorite people to talk to about anything, uh, but especially the Supreme Court. Sherilyn, it's really nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Rachel. You have been an advocate for a long time um, that the court needs discipline effectively, that the court needs reform, that it has behaved in such a way in recent years that rightfully call its legitimacy into question and to the public in a way that's that's dangerous given the important role of the court in our in our society and in our system of government what do you assess uh, as the sort of the weight the heft the uh, potential to meet the moment of these reforms proposed today by president biden well it's going to be a very steep climb um, obviously this is not something that can be done by presidential fiat um, or by executive order, it would require Congress to pass legislation. And that means that um, obviously this will not happen with this Congress, but if the next Congress is to take it up, it would likely mean you would have to have a majority of Democrats in both the House and the Senate. And that's why talking about this election, it's important to not just talk about the president if you want Supreme Court reform. But it's also a heavy lift because, look, Rachel, it's difficult. It's difficult for me as a litigator to um, to to talk about these kinds of reforms and the need for them. But as um, a civil rights lawyer, as someone who believes in democracy and as someone who understands the power of this court, not only to hold the line and the rule of law, but also to get us off the track of healthy democracy. The court has done it in the past. And I think we have to take very, very seriously uh, what this court is doing, the track that it's on, and what it could potentially do to our country. The forgotten part of my fellow citizens. It is strong. It's my duty to report the true problems of our nation. We vigorously developed this resource to be of great benefit. Where diverse nations are drawn together in common cause. I will be eternally grateful for your support. 